the first chapter in most physics textbooks talk about units and stuff. And so I want to talk about units. Um, I don't normally spend a lot of time in class. So this is what you need to know. You know, and the first thing is, this is a meteor. I don't know if you knew that. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Um, you can buy these online. They're not too expensive for something that big. And you should, because this thing came from space. And I think that's awesome. Um, so suppose I want to, like, do some calculations on this. Maybe I want to I want to measure I want to find the volume. I want to measure the density. I want to measure the mass. Um, you know, some magnetic properties of it. Maybe all sorts of things. I'm gonna actually have to measure it in some way. Uh, and and when I calculate stuff, those units that I measure in are important. So we can't just you know ignore the units. You know, if I say this has a mass of five, five what? five kilograms or five grams. That's a really big difference. And this is probably more like 50 grams. Um, but you have to include the units. And then when we calculate stuff, we have to deal with the units too. So sometimes we're gonna change units. So let's just talk about this important thing first of all. Um, these are our fundamental units. Really, these are the only kind of things that we can measure. And we call this the uh, SI base units. So when we talk, in physics, we're going to use everything in terms of these units. And there are other units, but they're all made of different combinations of these. So let's just go over these really quickly. Mass, we measure that in a kilogram, in kilograms, not grams. I don't even know why, but we do. Uh, and then we have the distance in meters, time in seconds. And then this one uh, we do have to have and that's the value of an electric charge in coulombs. You know, things like magnetic fields, um, electric currents, we can all may determine those in these other units, and that is kind of cool. Okay, now there is one other thing, because we do have this K here, KG, uh, and that's our, um, our prefixes, I think they're called. Uh, just, and, and maybe you already know these, but that's fine. Um, so if I write, I can have mass, I could have a gram, I could have a milligram, I could have a kilogram, I could have a megagram. All right, those are all different uh, prefixes on there and they mean certain things. So kilo, which we usually just write K, but it can come up a different way. Kilo really means one times 10 to the third. So one kilogram is one times 10 to the third grams. Okay, that's what that means. Uh, and then we have another uh, bigger unit, which would be the mega. And we'll also use this as just capital M. And that is 1 times 10 to the 6. That's a million times. Uh, another one that we're going to have is the giga. Or if you watch uh, Back to the Future, it's giga. I don't know if you remember that. If you haven't seen that movie, it's really good to like it. And uh, that usually capital G, and it's 1 times 10 to the 9th. And then we have uh, smaller versions of these units. We have the milla, milli, which is uh, lowercase m, 1 times 10 to the negative third. Then we have micro, and this is usually represented with a, a Greek letter mu, and that's 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So that's a 1 millionth. Uh, and then we have other really small ones. The only other one that I, I really want to look at is the nano, and that's lowercase n, and that's 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. So if you had a nanogram, which no one ever says that, uh, but we have a nanometer, okay, or kilometer, right? A kilometer would be 1 kilometer is 1 times 10 to the third meters. Uh, 1 nanometer is one times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Okay, so that's how that unit works. You can have a nanosecond, millisecond, nanocoulomb. You can put it with any of these. And you see here, like I said, we already have it in our base units. We have the K, the kilo. Okay, let's do um, some practice with unit conversions. So I, I want to do, um, a simple, I'll do, I'll do three. I'm going to do, um, let's convert um, three point, no, that one's easy. Hmm. 
let's just do uh, a speed. So let's say I have a velocity of 55 miles per hour and I want to convert that to meters per second because this is our preferred unit, right? If we look at our base units, uh, we have meters and seconds. We don't use miles and hours. But if we're going to do with, uh, deal with real world problems um, in the United States and in some very few select countries, uh, they do use this unit for speed. Uh, so it, we, we want to convert it over to our preferred units to, to, to our calculations. So let's convert this. The first thing I'm going to do is to write this as uh, not MPH, but velocity as equal to 55. I'm going to write it out miles over one hour. Right? That's what miles per hour means. It means it goes 55 miles in one hour. Now, if I want to convert this unit, but I want to keep the thing the same, I, I, the only thing I can do is to multiply this by the quantity 1. So as an example, suppose I multiply this by uh, 1 half over 0 0.5, and I pick that just as an example. If I did that, I didn't change the number, right? Because 1 half is 0.5. So multiplying it by this fraction doesn't change the thing. I can do that, right? I can multiply by 1 and I'm not changing anything. So the key is I want to always multiply by 1. So let's do this again. 55 miles per 1 hour. Uh, I want to multiply by something and I want to get rid of the miles. So let's say that I know 1 mile is equal to 5,280 feet. So let's convert this to feet per hour. So if I want to, I can multiply by using this as a fraction. I can say 5280 feet over one mile. So just like up here, where one half is the same as 0.5, so this is actually the value of one. This is the value of one, right? Because 5280 feet is one mile. So if I multiply by this over that, it's the same thing. So I'm multiplying by one. I'm not changing the velocity, but the units will change and the numerical value will change. Okay, so right here you see I have miles and I have miles and they actually cancel. So if I do this, I'll get feet per hour. If, if you want, you could multiply that out, but we don't have to. Because, um, and I, I probably should multiply it out, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to go ahead. I don't want feet. I want meters. So let's write this. I'm going to do this backwards, too. We normally write one meter as 3.28 feet because a meter is longer. So I can use this to get rid of the feet. Now, I want the feet to cancel, so I'm going to put these feet on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply this as one meter divided by 3.28 feet. I mean, you could write the number of meters in one foot and put you know, a number up here divided by one foot, and you're, it's going to be the same thing. But here, the feet cancel. So now I have 55 times that meters per hour. Now I need to convert the hours to seconds. So I can do this. Well, I know that in one hour, there are 60 minutes. So I'm going to say one hour, 60 minutes. And the hours cancel. Now you see what I'm left with. I'm left with meters per minute. I just need to convert the minutes to seconds. So I'm going to say one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And I'm done. What did I do right there? That is a minute. So the minutes cancel. Okay, so now we just need to multiply this whole thing together. Uh, let's pull out the calculator. Put it right here so you can see it. I'll put it right here so you can see it. So I'm going to say clear um, 55. I'm, I'm not going to worry about the units. I've already taken care of all the units. So 55 times five, oops, clear. 55 times 5280, and then right here, I'm gonna say, I, I'm gonna do all the multiplications on the top, right? Um, one times one times one, that's fine. And then I'm gonna say divided by parentheses, because if I don't do that, I'm gonna actually be multiplying by these things, and I don't wanna do that. 3.28 times 60 times 60, close parentheses equals, and I get 2.4, six meters per second. So these are equal. So this is the same thing because they have different units and different numbers, but they're still the same thing. Okay, let's do another example. 
Uh, gold, my paper is slightly off, not sure why. Okay, so gold has a density rho equals 19, oops, 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. So this is the Greek letter rho. Um, we use that for density so we don't confuse it with distance. Uh, but here we have grams and cubic centimeters. So this one is a little bit more challenging to do. I want to convert this to my preferred units of kilograms per cubic meter. No, not centimeter, cubic meter. Okay, well, let's just get to work. So I'm going to write rho equals 19. I did it again. Rho equals 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed. Let's get rid of the grams. So I'm going to multiply this by, I know that uh, one kilogram is equal to 1,000 or 10 to the third grams. Um, so those two things are equivalent and the grams are going to cancel. Now I need to convert centimeters cubed to meters. So I can go up here and say 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. I didn't use that prefix earlier, but I think you'd know that one uh, like that. And here the grams cancel, and here they don't cancel. Because here I have centimeters, and here I have centimeters cubed. So this will not fully work. What I would have would be uh, kilograms um, per centimeter squared times meter. And that's just weird. So I'm actually going to, I need to have, I have two more centimeters I need to cancel. So let's just do this again. 100 centimeter, one meter. 100 centimeter, one meter. And now these all cancel with that. And I get meter, 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 meter cubed. So this is going to be, let's just write this out. Rho is 19.3. I'm going to include my units right here of kilograms. Per, well, let's put the number first. Here I have uh, 100 times 100 times 100. All of that divided by 1,000. And then it's going to be kilograms per cubic meter. Now, if you want to put that in your calculator, you can, but we don't have to, right? Because that cancels with that, that cancels with that, and I get 1,000. So this is going to be equal to 19.3 uh, times 10 to the third kilograms per cubic meter. And let me just show you right here, one uh, water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter which is equal to 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So a cubic centimeter is really tiny, right? A cubic meter, imagine a box. It's like three feet by three feet by three feet, and you filled it with water. Man, that thing would be heavy. So these two are equivalent. We, it's, you may think this is weird seeing it like that. A lot of times in chemistry, you use grams per cubic centimeter. But we're physics, and we do it this way. OK. Let me show you a couple other uh, things. And, and if you haven't gotten to this yet, that's fine. But I talked about these other units like the Newton. Um, so let's say, what's one Newton? Uh, it's a unit of force. And, but what, suppose you want to break that into its basic uh, units. Kilograms, meters, seconds, coulombs. Well, the one way to do that is to use an equation. So if I know an equation with force in it and the other units, that's fine. So one of those, and I'm going to write the scalar version. I'll call this F net X is mass times acceleration in the X direction. Um, now, what about acceleration? I don't have a, an equation for that. Well, I can say that X acceleration is the change in velocity with respect to time. Well, I don't have velocity. Well, let's do that. Velocity is the change in position with respect to time. So now I know these, right? So I can all work backwards, 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 and I can get the value for the a, a Newton. So let's get velocity. This is going to be in uh, meters per second. Those are both base units, meters and seconds, so that's fine. Uh, the acceleration is going to be in units of velocity, change in velocity, which is meters per second divided by the time in seconds. So we write this as meters per second squared, um, just as a convenience. It's probably better to write it as meters per second per second, but we'll write it that way. 
So over here, I can say my force, I'm gonna write just the units, Newton is equal to the mass, kilograms, times the acceleration, meters per second squared. And so then that's it. So one Newton is one kilogram meter per second squared. That will come in handy at other times. Another fun one to do is the joule. So it's a unit of energy, one joule. Again, we need some equation with, an in, with energy in it. Um, you can do a couple of them. Let's use kinetic energy, and we haven't seen this yet. That's fine. One half mv squared is the kinetic energy. I already have the velocity, so I'm just going to put in my units. It's going to be one half doesn't have a unit. Kilograms, and then the velocity squared is meters per second squared. So it's going to be kilograms meters squared. That's a gram per second squared. And that's my unit for a joule. One joule is a kil one kilogram meter per second squared. Okay, I think that's enough to start off with. Units.